go the way of all mummies? Or, or <laughs> well, first of all, I, I think that you really have to look at multiple platforms of presentation that in multiple contexts. And you know, as a curator, I like to think that I'm looking at a history and representing it, and I'm looking at contemporary work in relationship to a history. Mm -hmm. And I'm, uh, uh, you know, theoretically and historically and critically providing an access or an understanding to the work. However, in terms of uh, bringing work into combination, I mean, as collectors do that in their private, in their homes, and uh, as curators, as anyone could be a curator who has an idea about work, about how to put it together, and in doing that, gives us another window onto that work. I mean, I'd be, I'm really fascinated to hear about that self-curating, giving artists the opportunity. I mean, the artist space movement from the early 70s, which created a new place for artists to create, show their work, was artists created mm -hmm. and curated by those artists. And that's where I went as a curator at the Whitney to see new work at the kitchen and all these uh, places in the early 70s. So this is now happening on other platforms in other ways. But also speaking to the issue of interactivity, I mean, the nature of art and how it can change in time by the user's relationship to it is um, interactive in terms of the technology, but you know, it's interactive in terms of looking at anything because there is that transaction between the viewer and the work. Maybe changes. another word that's of importance is connoisseurship. When, when you have phenomena like YouTube, uh, and these multiple uh, interactive situations now, which I think are part of the legacies of Nam June. I mean, the, yeah. this multiplicity, I think, there's a trajectory from him to all of this. Is there, a, what does this do for artists? I mean, how do you guys, you, your, your site, if you will, is curated, I understand, by you? Sort of? No, no. Um, it's, a, it's a combination of two things. Basically, we allow as, as we invite the artists, or the artists find us, um, as they submit their videos to us, they're supposed to give us um, a handful of uh, keywords defining their, defining their video, and then also defining their body of work. And then we come back in through the four of us, and then we kind of find like where we think they should go. And then we've got some other people that help us out um, that also give us their opinions on that. So it's, it's, it's allowing them to the free, the artist the freedom to choose, and then we come in and kind of reorganize it into more manageable groups because mm -hmm. artists, you know, every single artist has a different definition on what. And Google hasn't tried to buy you yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but you see, I, I really like this the idea of an active process, multi dimensional one, in terms of user, maker, and framer. And that's. Um, that's, you know, one thing I just want to say about Nam June is that he was totally irreverent. He would upset, I mean, the decorum of our conversation. He would turn inside out and find ridiculous, but wonderful at the same time. So, I mean, um, and that was part of his extraordinary energy because how this person could influence major foundations and their funding yeah. meant that he also believed in other artists, in supporting other artists, because he knew that the more artists working with the medium and enabled through it would make stronger that movement, and that's what that pretty much happened. Regrettably, we're running a little bit low on time, and no, not off the hook yet. I have a couple, of, maybe one impossible question. Now, June, he was taken from us too soon. This is true. But he also had a pretty good run, John, wouldn't you say? I mean, for, for the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, where, what, as he, before his illness, let's say, or at, when he was still uh, active, maybe one impossible question. Now, June, he was taken from us too soon, this is true, but he also had a pretty good run, John, wouldn't you say? I mean, for, for the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, where, what, as he, before his illness, let's say, or at, when he was still uh, active and physically well, where was he going? What, what was, um, uh, you know, this is a really interesting. Uh, the thing to re uh, remember before his stroke in 1996 was Nam June was perpetual motion. He was constantly traveling, 
constantly creating new projects, constantly trying to uh, make new ideas real. And that's, uh, it, was, it, it was extraordinary. I mean, that vibrant, like, it was just tangible energy. And he was very much at the, at the point uh, he was going, he was very much interested in the internet, he was very much interested in youth media, and um, he was also beginning to look at a new stage of representing his career, uh, which became the Guggenheim show that I curated. And he was very interested in laser, he was very interested in, which he had written about in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 60s, in enabling that uh, technology, working with Norman Ballard and Raphael, who's here in the audience, in terms of making <coughs> another medium and transforming and reinventing it. So uh, he was always looking to push, to push the boundaries. Push the boundaries. I think we have time for one question. Do we have a question? Oh, come on, don't be shy. Okay. Any questions at all? Yeah, yes, yes, hi. Uh, in what ways do you think that, um, that the art world has failed Nam June's Question is great question. In what ways do we think the art world has failed Nam June? Any, uh, well, a maybe you don't buy the premise, but no. Me. Well, I think that um, Nam June always understood the art world in terms of um, uh, galleries, markets, and so forth, and uh, he participated. That was very successful as an artist. But I think what I know was that he always felt that there should be an openness. And I think that the, uh, in one way, he would be, he was thrilled that the medium that he believed in had become generally accepted right. and, uh, and so forth. But the idea that the alternative space, the idea of other avenues to pursue and not just fulfilling the expectations that the market has yeah, I think that's exactly is something right. what he uh, would be looking for. And because that's what he did. I mean, there was no market I mean, he was struggling through the 60s, 70s. I mean, it was an effort to realize those projects. And um, there was no market support of it. So he, knowing that there's a new generation without a market, would be looking for that to be enabled in the future. He wouldn't be asking what do they want and what's going to sell. I, I think that, you know, that's an interesting point where, yes, there is a market for video art today in Basel, at Skobart Baranata, you can go to any of the fairs and see a video. Um, but one thing we have heard from a lot of the artists um, is that, you know, yes, they're making great video work, but they're maybe selling their paintings, selling their photographs. But when it comes to their video, they are not making any money on this. They may be showing in museums but in reference to commodifying their objects or the DVDs or their installations, you know, it's very little revenue to help them continue to create and they have to find other avenues to bring in money. And so, so one of the reasons why we created Pam, um, who she is, we, the four of us basically have become her slave. Um, we, we, are, we are trying to help them and we, we have helped um, a lot of artists in the past year, the project was officiated, officially kind of formed on December 27th last year and uh, premiered um, the first week of March at the Scope Art Fair. And I, I must throw out a, a, a credit to uh, Alexis Hutchman, the founder and owner of Scope Art Fairs, and if it wasn't for him and the, the great thing that Alex offers artists and has offered me and Aaron and Raphael and Chris, and the 550 other artists is, is the free opportunity to exhibit. Right. Now that I've completely lost my job, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end this conversation. I, I I'm only joking. I'm only joking. He, he, Alex is our partner in crime on this one. I'm only joking. I want to thank uh, very much John Hanhart, and Aaron Miller, and Lee Wells. And thank you very much for coming. We'll be around for a couple of minutes if you have some more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.